Hi friends, my name is Al or Lil Star Nerd. It's time to start a new sketchbook, which I am so excited for. This video in particular is going to be very fun, very exciting. We're doing a lot of new things today. I am not going to be using my regular Strathmore mixed media sketchbook. I know, crazy. A few months ago, Holbein very kindly sent me a couple of different sketchbooks, all of which are gorgeous and beautiful, but one in particular made my heart stop. The Cluster Special Watercolor Paper Sketchbook. Look at how gorgeous this is. Look at this color, like shut up. Oh my God. Holbein did send this to me for free, but they are not paying for this video. They didn't ask me to make a video. I'm just really excited to use the sketchbook. It's beautiful. It's got this beautiful binding. It lays remarkably flat, like ridiculously flat. The paper looks amazing. I'm really excited to try it out. It also is really, really small. We'll talk about what that means for me later in the video. But for now, I also have to talk about the other new exciting thing happening. We're trying out a whole new medium that I've never even heard of called opaque watercolors. Another artist on YouTube, Denise Soden, reached out to me and was like, hey, I have these paints would, that I helped make. Would you like to try them? Obviously, yes. I will link all of her information down below. She was just super, super kind. She sent me like also stickers and goodies as well as the paints. And I am so excited. I haven't opened anything. I haven't even opened her letter yet because I wanted to do it with you guys. And it's taken some real self-control, let me tell you. Thank you so much to Holbein for the wonderful sketchbooks. And thank you so much to Denise for these wonderful paints. I am so, so grateful and I'm so excited to use it all. Oh my gosh. And obviously while I paint something very fun with these new fun supplies, we'll also be talking about like this sketchbook and my plans for it and you know, the fact that it's not my normal one. So strap in, grab your own sketchbook, let's do some work together. Let's go. First of all, let me just warn you that I am recording this voiceover after I got sick. I sound gross, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so obviously I've got the new sketchbook which has 20 sheets of cold pressed paper, about six and a quarter by nine inches. I am so obsessed with this book, just the aesthetics of it. It's so sophisticated and beautiful and like the binding, everything is amazing. The quality of the paper too is just crazy. It's slightly off-white, which I personally prefer, and it's thick, but not like too thick that I'll be afraid to waste pages. Just overall, at a first glance, the sketchbook seems like such a gem. It's checking almost all of my boxes and I am so excited to try it out. But of course, before I can do that, I have to check out these new paints too. Like I said, I have been really holding myself back from tearing into Denise's package that she sent. She was so, so sweet and included some of her gorgeous stickers and this adorable postcard. Literally nothing makes me happier than art mail, so thank you so much, Denise. She also included some Arches paper for me and in an email, she said that using this paper is just amazing with these paints. So I thought I would swatch with them, which she gave me permission to do, even though it's really nice paper. But yeah, of course I'm going to do my actual piece in the sketchbook. I opened up the Moody 2 Trio, which are regular watercolors, but are meant to go with the other set. Like they pair really nicely. The box is a little beat up. Obviously this isn't how they would actually come. Denise very kindly sent all this stuff to me herself. So it's not packaged up the way it would be if you were to buy it from Da Vinci. Then I opened up the Big Kahuna, the Embrace Opacity palette of opaque watercolors. I won't go into a bunch of detail about what that means because frankly, I don't know, <laughs> but I will leave a link to Denise's video explaining this palette and why she developed it in tandem with Da Vinci so you can properly learn about this medium. Right away, I fell in love with this palette and the colors included and swatching them alone was such a treat. Despite doing my best to prepare to work with this medium, I really didn't know what to actually expect until I experienced them myself. And it was super interesting like just to swatch, to see how they dried, how they moved, how they felt. And right away, I knew I was going to love these paints. I adore this palette and how earthy and natural the colors are. And after swatching, I was feeling so excited to really get into using both the paints and the sketchbook. Before we really get started talking about this sketchbook and this piece, let me thank Denise one more time. Can you let me do what I need to do? It was so amazing to actually hold those paints in my hands. Like these are real professional quality, made by Da Vinci products that Denise has developed. It's just so cool and inspiring to see and I feel so honored and lucky to get to try these out. It is so encouraging to see an artist do something so big and cool. And it's so awesome that through this, I've been introduced to a whole new medium. So yeah, thank you so much, Denise. 
And these paints, like I said, I won't go into too much like technical detail about how they work or whatever, but I will tell you that I loved using them. They felt to me like using really watered down gouache or using really high quality watercolors with a tube of white gouache. You get what I'm saying? And I really feel like this medium is just right up my alley. As someone who enjoys both gouache and watercolor and enjoys mixing the two, this was just such an amazing balance between them while still like being its own thing. I was a bit worried that my reference photo choice wouldn't work super well, you know, being unfamiliar with how this medium works and all that. But not only did these colors work so well for this photo, I feel like it was meant to be, but I think the medium really lent itself to this kind of work. I think normally this is the kind of work that I would agonize over, like all the details and the grass and stuff, but knowing that I could layer these to some degree made such a difference in the process and made it really enjoyable overall. Yeah, I just, I really love these paints. I think Denise did an amazing job with them and I would love to keep exploring this medium. It was so interesting to work with and layer. Denise has a few videos, one in particular where she does such a good job of like introducing you to the paints and I try to keep some of the tips she gave in mind. Like at one point she mentioned that you can layer these a little less. So I had to think about like having limited layers to work with. She also mentioned that she was able to layer without worrying about picking up the layer beneath by using a really soft brush. So I pulled out the brushes I recently got from Etcher Lab, which are by far the softest brushes that I own. And I think they ended up working really well. So I tried to really absorb what she said and use all that information, but I don't know if I, exactly did everything right. I think overall I use them pretty effectively, but I definitely would love to work with them more to figure out what all I can really do with these, you know? But like I said, I think the reference photo worked really well. I think it was a great like introduction to these paints for me personally. It has a figure, which I'm definitely comfortable with. And then this top down view of grass, like scenery, which I'm less comfortable with, especially with a medium like watercolors. It was a great way to start learning about what can this medium do compared to other mediums I've used. And it was really cool to watch this piece come together, especially with the grass. Denise mentioned, I think if I understood this right, that these pigment granules are like larger, I guess. So they separate or like sit differently. So like they move on paper and dry a bit differently, a lot lighter than they go down. And it was so cool to watch them and to see the layers take shape. I think the opacity played such a major role in how this piece came together too, like with a lot of the texture and stuff that I did in the grass. Although I did struggle with the lighting, I wasn't sure how to make it look like a spot of sunlight, like dappled on a darker surface. Like I'm not sure that that translated at all, but you know, I tried. I'm obviously doing a screen cap from The Last of Us. I love this scene, the screen cap. It's just very gorgeous. The aesthetic is very nice. And I feel like it's got the vibes for a first page, you know, it passed the tests for me. <laughs> Sometimes with the first page, I try to set the tone for the whole sketchbook or choose something that will help inspire me throughout the sketchbook. And in a way, I do think I'm doing that with this page. I think this page is both pretty and aesthetic, but also indulgent being, you know, it's like, it's fan art. And those are my two main but opposing goals for the sketchbook. The thing is, this sketchbook is so pretty and I don't care how dumb this is, but I don't wanna mess that up with like bad and low effort and ugly art. By the time I'm done with this baby, I'm gonna flip through and see some aesthetic ass art. I wanna see the effort that this gorgeous book deserves. I wanna take advantage of the perfect binding and quality paper. I do not want to see a bunch of skipped pages, abandoned sketches, half-hearted doodles, and lifeless nonsense. The thing is, I'm also currently on this whole journey of like learning to love sketchbooking again, and putting that kind of pressure on myself seems counterproductive. There's also the issue of this sketchbook being smaller than what I'm used to working in. The last time I worked in a really pretty, aesthetic, small sketchbook, I spiraled into a sketchbook dreading funk that took months to claw out of. I couldn't enjoy my time in it because I was afraid of wasting pages. I felt I didn't have room to work in and I thought everything I made was too ugly for the book. So you can see why maybe I'm a bit worried about trying all that again. I think this first page is a great reminder that finding that balance is possible. I can do indulgent art and it can still be beautiful and something that I'm proud to show off. Even though this first page isn't necessarily as lackadaisical as my pen sketches of my own characters, it still works as a reminder that I've given myself permission to do that in these sketchbooks, that, that these can be high quality and worthwhile too. So even though I really want to try really hard in the sketchbook, I don't want to squash the fun I can have in it. I don't want to get further away from my goal and further away from fun and indulgent art, my own characters, fan art, stuff like that. I actually think because of the risks that this sketchbook presents, it actually could be a great exercise and step forward in learning to love sketchbooking again, if I do this right. 
I'm finding that I really do want to do more art that's for me, that's for my own head, more stylized stuff, more character stuff. Even if it's temporary, like that's just what I'm artistically craving right now. And I really wanna get back into portraiture and I also am going to be doing little comics and stuff, but that's all stuff that generally I wouldn't consider like high quality stuff especially because I'm so often out of practice with that stuff. So it never looks quite as good as I want it to look. And I've been in that trap. Like, I mean, like that's what got me here, where I'm so out of practice with all that stuff, where the pressure to make pretty aesthetic spreads kept me from doing the art I wanted to do sometimes. I definitely wanna make sure that that doesn't happen here because I really feel like I'm on the cusp of a great relationship with my sketchbook again. Like I'm, I'm on the verge of balancing my quote unquote professional art and stuff that is just for me. Which I talked about this in a recent video and I got so many of you guys being so wonderful and supportive and saying that you wanna see me do what makes me happy in art. And that is so, so kind and it's definitely been so encouraging to me and pushed me to like want to do that and share that more. But it definitely is a bit more complicated than just like wondering if people will watch videos of OCs, right? It's, it's more than that. Now that art is like my job, I'm always thinking about what will potential clients or companies that I might work with think of my art too, you know? Now that art is like my job, I'm always thinking about like what will potential clients or companies that I might work with think of my art too. I want the first art people see to be representative of what they might purchase from me and I want it to look professional, you know? Which like who's to say that any of the art I or anyone potentially may do or currently does is unprofessional, right? Like who gets to say what is and isn't professional? But like I, I do think about that. That and like is this something I want my family members to see, right? <laughs> like, yeah, like there are other things holding me back, but I actually think this sketchbook could be a great way of getting over all of that. Because hear me out, okay? I want this sketchbook to be really pretty, right? So like I will attempt to make any art in it look nice. So like the art that normally would be my more sketchy, doodly stuff or my quote unquote unprofessional stuff will essentially go through a beauty filter to be in this sketchbook. I will be forcing myself to put more effort into the stuff I never put effort into. And I think that'll be awesome. I'll actually dedicate time to that stuff where normally I don't really give it the time it deserves. And then maybe seeing it all through this beauty filter, right? <laughs> will make me like change my mentality towards this kind of art and its place in my career. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm hoping that tracks. Anyways, this book is of course much smaller than my regular one. It only has 40 pages, whereas my usual has 62. Not only that, but it's also a few inches smaller overall. So I really don't think I'll need the full three months I usually use to complete a sketchbook. Instead, I'm aiming for two months, which is probably a bit more than I need considering the smaller dimensions, but I wanted to make sure I had a little extra time to put into the sketchbook so I could meet my goals of keeping the sketchbook in a really beautiful and aesthetic way. I don't wanna have a bunch of pages I have to half-ass or skip over just to meet my time limit. And if I find that the two months really isn't enough for me to put a lot of effort in, then I can definitely take the three months. I just wanna make sure I have plenty of time to enjoy being in this sketchbook and you know, give it the love it deserves, right? It being a sketchbook I've never used before, I don't know how long or how short, how fast I could potentially complete it. Obviously I'd like to take less time than more time, but I, I am really trying to take care of my sketchbook health right now. And if I require more time, I'm gonna give that to myself. So yeah, I'm feeling super optimistic about this sketchbook. I ended my last one on a really high note and overall feel really good about my previous sketchbook. And I really love this first page. So I'm feeling super, super good about it. Very confident, very enthusiastic, very inspired. This sketchbook is definitely really, really exciting me, inspiring me. So I'm just like super ready to see how this goes. Very excited. I do hope that I can get it done in two months, but we'll see, I guess. <laughs> And with that, the sketchbook is officially started. I had such a good time, not only in the sketchbook, I'm super impressed by the paper. Look at that warping, barely anything, that's crazy. The sketchbook itself is beautiful. I, like I said, I am just so obsessed with like the aesthetic of this sketchbook. And I just had such an amazing time with these paints, the pigments themselves, the way they worked. And I feel like they were perfect for this reference photo. So I'm just super thrilled. Her face is a little wonky. It was a weird angle. Just don't look too hard at her face. Just, you know, feel the vibes. <laughs> I love this as a first page. I, I'm just really happy. I'm just coming off a high. This was such a fun experience. I love trying new things. So I just, I'm feeling good. If you are interested in these paints from Denise or the sketchbook from Holbein, both will be linked down below. I'm not making money from it. Again, I'm not sponsored, but I do really like them. So I want to share them with you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, the whole shebang, you know what to do. I'm going to go play the new uh, Sims baby update. So I'll talk to you later. Go read a poem, eat a snack, and go do some art. Bye.